learning everything there is to know about this short game is the most important thing you can do. I, I, I did a clinic not long ago at the club, and it was chipping and bunker. <coughs> and I, it was an outing, and, and I had probably 30 people come down. Everybody wanted to chip, and I said, well, well, how about the bunkers? Anybody want to do bunkers? And it was like there was a fire down in that bunker or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay with that. Uh, well, that tells you right away that they're not very good, but the hard thing is when you're teaching a group like that is they've got to stand and watch each other hit bunker shots. It's okay if they're out there with me, it's just me and them. And they stand there and they say, well, how, how do I do this? And then if you blade one over the green or move one two feet, it's okay. But when you got 30 people standing there, yeah, they would not even get close to the bunker. So this is something that, that so many people just hate bunker play. Okay, yes, you want light grip pressure when you're in the sand. Your weight is slightly on your left side, approximately 60% again of the weight is on your left side when you're in the sand. Okay? Swing the club with a free wrist hinge. Uh, most people, when they get in the bunker, the tension is so bad that they're gonna squeeze blood out of that, that grip. <laughs> but when you're in the sand, you truly do have to be at the most relaxed stage you can ever be. I see some guys in here that are old enough to remember Julius Boris. I mean, one of the greatest players I've ever seen. But the guy was truly phenomenal in the sand because he swung the same way as he did when he hit drivers. And yet, as a young kid and growing up in Pinehurst, I got to watch him practice all the time and, and to just watch that swing over and over and over might have been the most monotonous thing I've ever seen. He, he truly used to have three caddies, one in the middle, one on the left, and one on the right. And I can still remember as a 12-year-old sitting on a fence watching him Started to the guy in the middle and cut it to the guy on the right and started to the guy in the middle and hook it to the guy on the left and then hit one dead straight to the guy right in the middle of, of the three of them. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big believer when you're hitting a golf ball or hitting a sand shot, you have to play shots. You don't want to stand ever and practice anything thinking about technique that much. Pick you out a shot that you want to hit. If you want to hit a cut, try to stand there and hit cuts. Try to stand there and hit hooks. But when you stand there and you start thinking about where my hand should be here, or here, or here, I've got video, I've got everything that you can come up with. I've got every angle that you can look at. And truly, when I give a lesson, and, and it's an hour long, I may look at five swings. But it's really strange when I take it outside and put people in the sand, what they look like. They don't look like the same human. They really and truly don't. And that's what happens, and that's the reason most people are poor bunker players. They just get out there and let, let the tension just kill them. <coughs> okay. <coughs> You always want to make a good shoulder turn in the sand. Yeah, there's not a lot of weight shift, but you want to stand there and turn away and hit that sand shot, again, hitting three to five inches behind that ball. You've got to let the bounce of the club work for you in the sand. And everybody understands when they when they buy a sand wedge and, and you see on the bottom, it'll tell you how much bounce is on that wedge. Go out there and try to hit you some sand shots and see which number you need. This one happens to be four degrees of bounce. The question
question asked to Bob Volke again a couple years ago. What's the average number of bounce the guys on the PGA Tour use? <coughs> the answer was 11. 11 degrees of bounce they use on the bottom of the wedge. But this is what hits the sand right here. You let the leading edge, you're going right on to China. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. When, when you get in the sand and that leading edge, that toe's going to turn down and the club's going deep and it's never coming back up. So yeah, I, I, be careful when you're, when you're buying equipment. And you talk to these guys here, I guarantee you they talk about it a lot. Uh, they know what you're needing to do. <coughs> yeah, a guy like Phil Mickelson, he probably would love this four degrees of bounce. But that's how good he is. That's how good he made himself to be. <coughs> Okay, swing down and underneath the ball and up. Do people understand that? Yes. Any question on that? What do you mean by the end up thing? Okay. I was hoping some of that so. When you when you're in the sand and you hit a bunker shot, I also stayed in here on the next question or next which one is it? Well the ball exits the sand at the same at the same angle the club enters the sand. That's another one that gets a little bit confusing to people. But when you're in the sand, yes, that's the reason this bounce is so important. When you hit a sand shot, you work here, you want the club working up. You never want, even if you hit four inches behind it, you're going to hit it fast. Now, again, if you happen to have a bad line, you want to hit that chunk and run, then you may keep your hand. But you're always wanting that club moving up and out of that sand as quickly as you can. These are just, these are just some fundamentals that <coughs> that people never like to talk about or, or, or never like to read about, but they're the easiest thing you can do. <coughs> but learning to hit good bunker shots is, watch how much fun you can have when you go out there and start aiming for a bunker. <coughs> when, you're on a, when you're on a hole and the flag's right behind it, you don't mind shooting at the flag. Well, if I'm in the bunker, I'm at par anyway.